be Muslim, it shouldn't be Christian, and it shouldn't be Jewish. It should be non-secular, equal access to all people, all the major faiths, and, and it should have one rule for all people. Anything short of that, as far as I'm concerned, is always going to be a disaster that threatens all of us. And uh, I'm looking forward to the day where the whole world gets behind that idea, just as they did in the case of South Africa and the apartheid regime, which if we look back at the African National Congress and Nelson Mandela, the act that frightened uh, the apartheid government to death, the Ultimate Charter, the uh, African National Congress and Nelson Mandela made very, very clear what their ultimate goal was. It wasn't to have their own state in which they get to rule. It was to have one state, all people there, equal under the law. I believe it, that is exactly what needs to happen in Israel, Palestine, whatever we want to call it. Yeah, but I think we're, we're all pretty much aware that if there is a, a global war on peace, it's taking place on the people of Gaza at the moment. That is the front line. And we're sitting back doing nothing except for people like yourself, obviously, that are doing everything they can. Um, Essentially, what, what the Israeli government has kind of done, they, they've gone in there kind of in, like an invasion and set up their own state and pushed out the indigenous people of the land and then tried to claim self-defense back against as an excuse for the hostilities that they're doing there, kind of in the same way that the military who boarded your ship are trying to claim self-defense <laughs> against you and your and the people who basically, like, like you were saying on Hard Talk the other day, uh, they're in, in international waters on a humanitarian aid mission. They kind of invade your ship and then claim self-defense as an excuse for shooting you and your friends. You know, would you agree with that? Yeah, we, we, we are really living in Orwell's 1984, aren't we? Oh, Where yes. speak. Black is white, white is black, and the truth is nothing but a word. Uh, the terrorists, clearly, are not the people who are resisting occupation and mass murder in the form of war. Those are people who are doing what any of us would do in those circumstances. I certainly would not sit by while my land is being invaded, occupied, and having my family being killed. And I know that every single honest American or British person will admit, if it were them, if they were the ones who were dealing with an occupation, an invasion, collaboration with their own brothers and sisters from their own nation, and the absolute theft of their land and the killing of their family, every self-respecting British or American person would acknowledge the obvious. They would fight. They would use whatever method possible to repel the invader. The Palestinians, the Iraqis, and the Afghanis, that is exactly what they're doing. So I see my brother over there fighting, doing exactly what I would do. The terrorist is clearly, when we get away from this ridiculous Orwellian doublespeak, the terrorist is, in fact, Britain, the United States, and Israel. They're not the only ones. There are other nations that are committing crimes, and I'm not saying we're the only ones responsible, but we are, without doubt, the largest purveyor of terrorism on the planet. The United States can claim number one without any question millions and millions and millions of dead and maimed and terrorized people behind them. And ultimately, until the world finally wakes up and realizes that, as Martin Luther King said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Since the United States is the biggest purveyor of terrorism with its junior partner, Britain and uh, Israel, since that is the case, all nations, all people must unite to really prioritize these nations and affect a punishment for them that will stop, will tell them correctly to stop. And and until we until we take that uh, take that take it to that level, you know, we we threaten our own existence. And I mean, th this is what it's coming down to. In a way, you know, it had to come to this. It, it's going to have to come to this. That the proverbial line in the sand is going to be drawn. And those that are heavily indoctrinated and cannot see the truth staring them in the face can go ahead and stand on that side with the, with the uh, state-sponsored terrorism of, of the U.S. and Britain and so on. Or, or we, the people of the world, the ones who are doing uh, all of this work being the wage slaves that we are, can finally wake up and realize that we have one cause in common, and that is the cause of human rights. And I'm actually really, really hopeful. I really am. I believe that, that things are really turning around that more and more people are waking up, and there's enough. I think the critical mass is already there. If, if the amount of people who are already awake get together intelligently in a disciplined way, we can achieve so much more than we realize. And the flotilla 
is just a small example of that, I reckon. It, well, you say it's a small example, Ken, but I, I firmly believe that basically the entire free world are watching the flotillas with great interest. It, we, we're fighting our own petty little battles on legal semantics and, you know, the, the whole Western civilization thing's petty in comparison with the suffering that's going on in Gaza at the moment. And as you say, it's clearly nothing more than the theft of a country. Israel has always resented the existence of Gaza. And we need to point out here that we don't hold... I mean, when, when you're talking there a minute ago about all the people of the world needing to unite to stop this tyranny, which is essentially the secret governments, you know, and the, the New World Order agenda, that includes the uh, Israeli people. If there are people from Israel listening to this show, and we know that your government is... You're not responsible for this, and you probably dislike the government as much as we are for what they're doing. And uh, one thing that these, these, these people do over in Israel is they're running high behind the anti-Semitic label. As soon as you start speaking against them, you're just branded as being anti-Semitic, and they use the kind of racism Trump card against you. But you know, most Jews are actually anti-Zionist as well. You know, it's, it's, not the, uh, it's not the Jewish people or anything like that that we're against. It's these Zionist, New World Order, soulless people who have um, no other agenda than to have complete domination over the world at any cost. Agreed. And um, each, each religion has, uh, you know, factions within it that really, I think, uh, don't re represent any kind of genuine religion. To me, the root of any genuine religion has at its core the golden rule. Any religion that preaches that you're God's chosen ones and uh, that you can impart separate rules on others because they're less than you is a false religion as far as I'm concerned. And the major religions, all of them, whether it be Christianity, Islam, or Judaism, and others, all have extreme views uh, within them, but I don't think those represent the, the, real, the real truth of a, of a religion. And, you know, within Judaism, you clearly have the Talmudic, um, you know, the, the Goyim, Gentile uh, version of Judaism, which imparts great value on Jewish life and virtually none on anyone else. I mean, you know, uh, hopefully, uh, and, I, and I'm, I'm quite hopeful that it, that it will be the case, that that attitude is not going to prevail. If it did, if it did, and the majority of Jews believed in that kind of ideology, uh, well, then it would be important that we would unite against it. But I, I don't have any uh, doubt that the vast majority of people who call themselves Jews can't possibly buy into the notion that they are so special that everyone else is subpar, subhuman. Um, that would be, I think, unfair, un, uh, you know, not representative of, of the Jewish people, and I'm certainly not going to partake in it. But criticism of Zionism and the policies of Israel cannot be called, considered synonymous with uh, being anti-Jew. Uh, it's absolutely ridiculous, and it's promising to see that those days of, of, of tagging people anti-Semitic uh, simply for criticizing Israel, they're finally starting to die. That tag is starting to die, as it should. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it, it's washing with most people anymore. It, it's no, it doesn't go unnoticed that every time Israel per perpetrates some real atrocity in the Middle East, in the Western media roll out all the old Schindler's lists and endless documentaries on the horrors of the Holocaust. You know, they were doing the same thing anybody, anybody criticised Obama for going along with this as well, calling us uh, anti-black. So they, they basically just hide behind this complete thinly veiled attempt to try and justify what they're doing. It's, it's, it's a disgrace. Have, have, you, have you heard, um, Ken, you might have heard about this, about there's been a, a huge boycott of Israeli shipments by dock workers over in um, Turkey. In fact, I, have a, I received an email today. If I could just read it out, I'll read the first paragraph. It says, uh, Dock workers worldwide responded to Israeli's flotilla massacre and Gaza siege. And it says, Three weeks after the massacre on the Freedom, F Freedom Flotilla, ILWU dock workers in the San Francisco Bay Area delayed an Israeli Zim line ship for 24 hours. The Swedish Dock Workers Union began a week-long blockade of Israeli ships and containers. Dockers in the port of Cochin, India, refused to handle Israeli cargo, and Turkish Dock Workers Union of Liman Is announced their members would refuse to service any Israeli shipping. In South Africa, Durban dockers had already boycotted a Zimline ship in response to the invasion of Gaza last year, and on the fifth anniversary of the Union Palestinian call for boycott, divestment and sanctions, 
Israel faces the prospect of targeted industrial action to implement boycotts. So there's been a, a huge response to the incident which happened on this flotilla that you attended. Do you, would this might be an appropriate point, if you don't mind, Ken. Do you want to go through... Um, well, tell us the story of the flotilla. I'll leave it to you where you yeah. choose to start. But uh, I know our listeners really want to hear some truth about what actually went on when the Israelis stormed the ship. But in the meantime, if you would like to fill us in on the details of that. Yeah, sure thing. Uh, you know, I mean, the first thing that I should say is that uh, I personally did not think that the Israelis were, were going to attack. And I, I, I know I wasn't alone. Um, I think a lot of us believed that we, we had a, a very good chance of, of achieving our, our goal, which was to arrive in Gaza and deliver the aid and visit the people of Gaza. Um, I, I, I believe that so much. I brought all of you know the valuables that I had, my laptop, you know, a couple of cameras and lenses and you know stuff like that. I, I brought some, you know, important documents. I had business uh, meetings set up with uh, trading partners and businessmen in Gaza to further the uh, agenda of my uh, social enterprise, Aloha Palestine, which intends to do trade. And um, ultimately, you know, I'm, I'm uh, even uh, even a couple of hours before the attack, and I had some of my uh, friends on the ship saying, you know, they're going to come, they're going to come. I thought, nah, they're not going to do it. So I was, I was, you know, completely surprised that uh, that it that it happened. Not only that it happened, but the way it happened. Um, but you know, as as it turns out, you know, when it started happening, um, you know, that's part of the experience I had in the Marine Corps, you know, that the training that you get in the military uh, is, is kind of useful for sure. You know, you just kick in on what, what, what do you have to do? And, um, and, and it really was like a combat situation from the outset, uh, except for we didn't have combat weapons. Um, within the first moments of the attack, which was about 3.40, uh, nearly 4 in the morning, time to the morning prayers, the uh, assault boats, the Zodiacs, came up from both sides of the rear of the ship. Um, I think about maybe 10 or 12 uh, that I saw. There were also the Navy ships that were outside further on the perimeter. They had been following us for some time. Immediately upon uh, coming into, uh, you know, uh, throwing distance, you know, uh, they started firing their uh, percussion grenades, uh, smoke bombs, uh, tear gas, and firing rounds. Some of the rounds were paintball rounds. Some of the rounds were real rounds, or at least rubber bullets. And you know, I I can tell the difference, as I know other people can, between the sound of a paintball, and uh, and and rounds. Um, it, it ultimately, it was uh, it was a, you know, an orchestrated attack, and it was obvious because within the first three to five minutes, I had seen the the first dead body, and that was the gentleman who happens to be a photographer and a father of two, who had a bullet right square between his eyes. Um, and, and the injured people were, were, were happening, uh, were, were, were coming in even before the helicopter, so the first helicopter. But when the, when the helicopter came, it, 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 it did just step things up even further. I mean, now, not only did we have injured people from, from gunshots that were probably, some of them were being fired from the helicopters with snipers, uh, with laser-guided uh, rifles. Um, and also we had, of course, the assault boats, and then we had the, the commandos fast-roping down onto the ship. I mean, very, very quickly, it was it was as it was intended to be. They, they intended to create chaos, confusion, uh, to disorganize us and be able to take a tactical advantage over us by creating that chaos. These are basic military tactics, and that's why I'm saying from the beginning it was an attack. It wasn't an attempt to board. I think it's also worth noting that uh, having become friends with the captain, um, there was never any warning that an attack was coming. The, the, the Israelis did say, you know, you, you, you're not supposed to go, you know, don't go to Gaza, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, our captain was not going towards Gaza. He was actually running parallel to uh, the territorial waters of Gaza, and and when the attack occurred, there was never any direct warning, no proverbial shot across the bow, letting us know that if you continue even going parallel to uh, territorial waters of Gaza, we're going to attack. There was never a warning. This 